Welcome to Fighting Stats, the ultimate channel for MMA fans who love statistics and betting breakdowns. I'm your host, Art C, and I'm here to get you ready for the upcoming UFC fights. In this series, I'll be watching tape and providing my real-time analysis on how I think the fights are going to go. I'll be watching for fighters' strengths, weaknesses, tendencies, and overall strategies, pairing that with Fighting Stats' exclusive UFC stats not available anywhere else to give you a prediction on how I think the fights are going to go and, ultimately, who's going to win. So, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Welcome to Fighting Stats. Welcome back to Fighting Stats. I'm your host, Art C, and today we are breaking down the UFC 300 co-main event between Zhang Weili and Yan Shanan. So it's going to be China against China here. This is for the uh, flyweight um, championship belt, uh, UFC 300. Uh, Zhang Weili, uh, we're going to break down the fight. We've seen the fight tape from both sides, Yan Shanan and Zhang Weili. Uh, pretty impressive stuff. Uh, so I'll get uh, into the numbers right away. Uh, we'll go deep into the numbers, see what the fighting stats uh, numbers tell us, uh, who has the edge on paper. And then I'll give you my prediction and sort of what I saw on the fight tape, uh, where the weaknesses sort of lies, and give you my overall prediction on how I fight, think the fight's going to go. Uh, then I'll go into the numbers. I'll set my lines. I'll see where the prop line should be. It'll tell us what the best bets are, uh, and it'll tell us how much of our bankroll to put on. Again, this is UFC 300. I'm going, so I'm excited to get this fight broken down. Let's get this started. So, uh, Zhang Weili here on the blue side. Uh, Yan Shanan is going to be on the red side. Both fighters 8-2 in the UFC. Uh, Zhang Weili, 25% of her wins coming from KO, 25% by submission, 50% of her wins by decision. Uh, does have two losses, one by KO, one by decision there. Um, those two losses, one by head kick, and then the other one was a split decision. I think both two rows there. Uh, Yan, 8-2 uh, in the UFC, only 13% of her wins by coming from KO, 0% by submission, 75% of her wins coming from decision. Uh, I think there's a, a no contest or something in there. Uh, two losses as well, uh, one loss by KO, one by decision. So uh, let's get into the uh, Zhang Weili uh, offensive striking current champion of the division. So uh, she mixes it up here. So she's going to have 63% of her strikes going to be at a distance. 29% uh, of her strikes going to be a ground strike. So that's a big chunk of ground strikes there. And 8% of her strikes coming in the clinch. Uh, whereas her target breakdown, 68% towards the head. 12% uh, towards the body and 20% towards the legs, so it mixes in the targets as well. Striking accuracy, fairly good at 44% head strike accuracy, 68% body strike accuracy, and 69% leg strike accuracy. Uh, average strikes thrown by round, pretty looks like pretty even. 52 strikes thrown in round 1, 41 in round 2, 52 in round 2. Uh, sorry, round three, 54 in round four, and 63 in round five. So it does trend up going up from round two. And then strikes landed the same sort of trend line. Uh, 30 landed in round one, 18 in round two, 26, 27, and 33 in the later rounds there. Um, she does have three knockdowns um, in the UFC. Actually, thought it would be a little bit more, but uh, one knockdown in round one, one knockdown in round two, and one knockdown in round number five. Uh, and then uh, strikes landed by round, uh, by body, uh, by target. Um, sort of, yeah, pretty standard there. Doesn't go to the body too much. Does a lot of leg kicks. Averages 7, 8, 9, uh, 9, 5 leg kicks as a, uh, the rounds go on. So decent leg kick numbers there to keep an eye out. So. Um, we talked about the striking there. So three career knockdowns. Overall 53% strike accuracy. Um, did want to highlight some of these ground numbers here. So uh, Amanda Lemos round one, she landed, uh, she threw, sorry, landed 41 ground strikes against Amanda Lemos. Uh, round five, 44 ground strikes against Lemos. 13 against Masparza in round number one. 35 against Joanna in round one. So uh, decent ground and pound from what we saw there. Uh, and then I do want to highlight some of these leg kick numbers. There's some some leg kick uh, rounds there. Uh, 12 leg kicks landed against Lemos in round number four. 
uh, 8 against Sparza in round number 1, uh, 11 against uh, Rose there, 8 against uh, Rose in round number 3 there. So decent late kick numbers overall thrown 195 late kicks in the UFC. Defensive striking here, uh, look at the numbers here. 84% of defensive strikes against Whaley have been at a distance, 10% uh, in the clinch and 6% on the ground, whereas her target breakdown against 72% of the shots absorbed are to the head, 12% uh, to the body, and 16% towards the legs. Uh, defensive striking um, average, uh, defensive head strikes, 36% defensive head strike against, uh, 73 to the body, a little bit high, 72 to the legs, not bad. Uh, strikes absorbed by round a little bit lower than her output. Uh, 11 strikes absorbed in round 1, 15 in round 2, 16 in round 3, 22 in rounds 4 and 5 there. Um, she has been knocked down once, and I think that was once against that head kick loss that she had against Rose there. Um, again, we talked about the knockdown. Overall, 46% defensive striking accuracy. Um, Hasn't seen a ton of leg kicks. Like, she fought Amanda Lemos for five rounds, and Amanda Lemos only landed two leg kicks. Uh, fought Joanna. Le Joanna landed six in round one, eight in round two. Uh, Yan Shanan, not a big leg kicker, but we'll go into those numbers there as well. Uh, just wanted to highlight some of that stuff. So uh, let's go over to the Yan Shanan offensive striking. Uh, she's going to be mostly a distance striker, 80% of her strikes at a distance, 8% in the clinch, 4% on the ground. <coughs> Uh, whereas her target breakdown, 80% of her strikes towards the head, 7% uh, towards the body, and 13% to the leg. So not big, not a bad leg kicker, I guess. Uh, she does throw a lot of inside low kicks, so uh, bigger numbers than what I remember on the tape. Uh, striking accuracy, 38% head strike accuracy towards the head, 68 towards the body, 75% towards the legs. And then average strikes thrown by round does trend up in rounds uh, 3 so 52 strikes thrown in round number one, 62 in round number two, 74 in round number three, and then drops off a little bit to 56 and seven. That's because I only think she went five rounds once, and that was against Mackenzie Dern there. Uh, one knockdown in her UFC career, uh, and that was in that last fight. Her last fight, she was her only knockdown against Jessica Andras. Jessica Andras throwing that triple left hook and then getting countered with the right hand there. Uh, on the defensive striking here for Yan Shanan, 81% uh, of her strikes going to be absorbed at a distance, 10% uh, in the clinch, 9% on the ground, 83% of the head strikes absorbed uh, towards the head, 11 to the body, and 6 towards the ground or towards the legs. Defensive striking, head strike defense, 32%, not bad, 66% uh, to the body, not bad, and 77% towards the leg, not bad as well. Uh, strikes absorbed by rounds, 15 strikes in round number one, 19 strikes in round number two, 21 in round number three. And again, the four and five you're going to ignore because, again, there was only one fight sample size. So uh, strikes absorbed does go up as the rounds go on there. Uh, and then, again, has never been knocked down uh, in the UFC there. So worth noting that. Um, let's go over to the grappling because I think the grappling here is going to make a big difference in this fight. Um Let's take a look at the Zhang Wei Li numbers first. I think if anybody's going to shoot a takedown, it's going to be Zhang Wei Li. We saw some grappling deficiencies uh, from Yan there. So, again, we talked about the 29% strike breakdown. 29% of the strikes landed by uh, Zhang Wei Li are kind of come from the ground. So, that's a big chunk of her ground strikes. She averages 1.8 takedowns attempted in round number one, two attempted in round number two, and 1.4 attempted in round three. Uh, being successful in 0 0.7, 0 0.7, and 0.6 uh, takedowns in those rounds. So decent ground numbers there. Uh, overall in her UFC career has attempted 45 takedowns, only successful in 19 of them. So less than 50% takedown accuracy, uh, but did land five, uh, six against Amanda Lemos, getting a takedown in almost every single round. Carla Sparza didn't need to. She did get some uh, top time. I guess she wasn't counted as a takedown. I think it was more of a reversal. And then got three against Joanna there as well. Uh, even Rose Namajunas, she had landed five takedowns against Rose. So uh, of those numbers, more grappling recently. So uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, so a lot of takedowns in the last 10, 11 so rounds, 10 rounds. Um multiple takedowns in a lot of those rounds and again we go back to the ground strikes keep that in your mind there so uh decent ground numbers there defensive grappling um 
only seen a nine takedown attempts. Only three of them have been successful, so, so 30% takedown defense. Uh, I won't go into those numbers because I don't think Yan's going to grapple too much here. Look at her numbers uh, career-wide. <coughs> Uh, Jan's only attempted 12 takedowns, 8 of them have been successful, has not shot, well, she did shoot against Marina Rodriguez, she got credited for 4 takedown attempts, 2 of them being successful, Marina Rodriguez not really great on the ground either, not pretty strong, uh, and then again against Car Carolina Kovalkiewicz, uh, attempted 6 takedowns, 5 of them have been successful, so that, that's against uh, Carolina there. Um, Angela Hill shot one takedown, didn't, uh, got it as well uh, for five seconds of control time. So uh, worth noting again that uh, I don't think Yan's going to shoot a takedown there. So let's go into the red defensive grappling. I think those are the bigger numbers that we need to look at. Um, she's seen 1.6 takedown attempts against in round number one. Half of them, or sorry, 0.5 of them have been successful in round number two. Uh, 0.2 have been successful in round number two. Uh, sorry, 0.5 in round number one, 0.2 in round number two, and 0.3 in round number three. So um, decent takedown defense on paper, uh, but let's see who's tried to take her down. Yeah, a lot of that is going to be uh, Mackenzie Dunn. So overall in her UFC career, 34 takedown attempts seen. Only 10 of them have been successful there, so uh, less than 30% takedown defense which is pretty good on paper but again Mackenzie Dern is going to uh, skew uh, some of those numbers there uh, here's Mackenzie Dern attempting 11 takedowns only getting two of them uh, so keep that in mind Mackenzie Dern's grappling is pretty bad uh, Carla Esparza going three for three in takedowns a ton of control time in, in those takedowns as well Claudia Cadelia going for two for five again I, I watched that fight I thought she went two for two they credit her with five takedown attempts I didn't see it. It was more clinching up against the fence. Uh, you know, anytime you lift the leg, they give you a takedown attempt. So keep that in mind. And then uh, Car Carolina Kovacic is not very good. Angela Hill attempted three, got one takedown even. Uh, and then just in her early career against Kaylin Curran uh, att attempted six. Sir. So not the best competition attempting takedowns and then getting successful so uh, i'm going to go into the breakdown and again a lot of this breakdown is going to be dependent on this takedown defense of yan Shanan because that's what i saw is the greatest weakness for her so um on the fight team i'm going to start with that that side that yan Shanan side and I, actually let's go back into the grappling numbers just so it's part of my grap breakdown so yan Shanan, i'm going to categorize her as mostly a boxer um She's going to stay on the outside. She does have uh, a variety of strikes. She likes the jab. She likes the one, two, uh, one, two, three, even. Her leg kicks are mostly uh, going to be inside low kicks. Uh, she will stand orthodox for most of the fight. And she does have a very good pull back, step back, counter right. Uh, she, that's what she landed against Andraj with. Um, sometimes she will even see her uh, pop the jab to sort of bait the counter out, step back out of the way of the counter, and then pop her own counter to the counter. I call it the one and three uh, sort of thing. So that's what she's pretty good at. What I found she has a really bad uh, tendency is that um, her takedown defense is not very good. Again, we'll go into some of these ones, but we saw the Claudia Gedalia, again, getting two takedowns there in round number one, getting 246 minute, uh, seconds of control time. And then Claudia Gedalia pretty much uh, cardio dumped there and was uh, not able to do anything in rounds two and three. Uh, you can see the takedown numbers attempted there, but not able to get it. So she got picked apart at range uh, for rounds two and three after she slowed down. <coughs> Again, Carla Esparza going three for three in takedowns. If you look at the control time there, Carla Esparza controlled her from start to finish in that fight. Carla Esparza is not really a finisher, but she landed big ground and pound numbers. Uh, you can see Carla Esparza here landing 13 strikes in round number one, uh, 13 strikes in round number two, and eventually finishing her uh, by crucifix. Uh, then she fought Marina Rodriguez, who has zero ground game, zero attempt shot there. So that was a stand-up fight there. That was fine. Mackenzie Dern, again, she's great on the ground. BJJ wizard, but zero grappling. So really struggled to get the takedowns there. When Mackenzie Dern did get the takedown, so she read out, rode out to top control. Um, there was one sequence there where Mackenzie Dern is actually butt scooting on the ground, trying to get closer to Yan. Yan, all she had to do was circle off. But she, Yan goes for the punch to the body, ends up getting uh, her arm or leg caught, and then Mackenzie Dern dragging her down to the ground, reversing her, getting the back mount and full mount. So 
Yan's definitely a weakness on the ground, and, and she did get, again, she got ground and pounded uh, by Carla Esparza. She got taken down by Carly uh, Cadelia, and then Mackenzie Dern got her down there. But she did survive 10 minutes on the ground with Mackenzie Dern, so give her credit there. <coughs> Uh, again, whereas the um, Zhang Weili side, she's just looked like an absolute beast uh, every time she's come out now. She's really working in more takedowns every time we fought. We went, went over those numbers there, right? She took down Amanda Lemos, who I, I say is a, a better striker uh, than Yan Shinan. And again, she took her down uh, five or six times, went to decision with her. Carla Esparza didn't need to take her down. She was a wrestler. Joanna Jonchechik, again, I think is a better striker than Yan as well. Took her down uh, three times, beat her up there on the feet. Even took Rose Nama Yunus down. So I'm going to say there's a high probability chance of Whaley taking the fight down to the ground and winning a lot of minutes on the ground, a lot of ground and pound, working the ground and pound, things like that. So uh, the fight will stand uh, orthodox versus orthodox. It's going to stay, uh, start standing. Uh, I think Yan's best chance in this fight is to land an early punch. Uh, our early right hand, the, pretty much the same punch she landed against Andrade. All of her other strikes aren't really power punches. She does throw a, a nice 1-2, one, 1-2-3, two, uh, one, two, but there's not any power on there. We saw Lemos land a couple of right hands against Wei Li. We saw Joanna John Jacek land a couple of right hands there, uh, and Wei Li just eats them. She has a decent chin, really only been knocked out once with a head kick. Otherwise, she just walks through the punches there. So uh, Yan landing a right hand is probably most of her win condition. Um, outside of that, I think if it stays standing, I'm going to, I'm going to say that Yan might be a little bit faster. Maybe, I don't think so, but maybe, um, if I had to give an edge anywhere, it might be, might be speed. It's definitely not power. Whaley has all the power advantage. Um, maybe it's technique, but even then, I think young uh, Whaley is just a bully. Uh, she can get her in close. She can control her on the fence there. We saw against, um, for Yan Shanan, Claudia Cadelia pushed her up against the fence there multiple times in that fight. Could never circle off the fight, uh, off the cage. Couldn't pummel for underhooks. Got stuck up against the fence. Needed the referee to break them up twice to get her off the fence there. So I do think that there's a strength uh, path for Wei Li just being bigger, stronger. I assume she's going to be stronger, uh, be able to control her against the fence if she wanted to. Uh, we saw the same thing. Uh, against Marina or Marina uh, rangy striker not very strong and even then in the clinches was sort of 50 50 so I see a lot of ways of winning for Zhang Wei Li I think it's going to be in the clinch I think it could be standing I think it'd be mostly on the ground probably on the ground there uh, by ground and pound it's going to be Yan trying to just limit the amount of damage and we saw it in the Lemos fight I'm going to call a repeat of the Lemos fight but I think the finish probably comes a little bit earlier we'll jump into the numbers right now but uh I don't see too much here for for Yan here. Wei Li's just I've I've been impressed with her every single fight there. And the Rose fight again, the head kick comes as a head kick. You get caught, you get caught. That's fine. Uh, the Rose Nama Yunus fight, she she sort of slowed down there uh, in rounds of four and five. Rose uh, using the grappling there, uh, pushing a pace, and then uh, Wei Li sort of tailing off there. Uh, we did see the five round fight with. Um, Yan Shenan and Mackenzie Dern into rounds four and five. Not that Yan Shenan was completely gassed, but we saw that um, her strikes came a little bit slower. Um, and I thought that a lot of her power had left her in rounds four and five. I thought she was about 60% power uh, up until that point. So still able to move, still able to move around, but not a lot of power there. So even cardio wise, I don't think that Yan Shenan has a decent cardio edge over Zhang Wei Li. And again, I think she's going to get beat up for the first three rounds. So it's going to be hard to have a, a real cardio edge in those later rounds there. So yeah, give me uh, Zhang Wei Li to win here. Let's go over to the numbers here. We'll give you exactly how much to put down and we'll break it down here. So I pulled up my bankroll uh, betting tracker here. Uh, what I like to do is I like to assign numbers and percentages to each outcome of the fight. It gives me a better idea of what side is the value side. And then also I use Kelly Criterion Calculator to sort of guide me in how much uh, of my bankroll I should be betting on this. Uh, this one is at UFC 300 and I'm going to UFC 300. Very excited on that. So uh, Kelly Criterion is going to tell me, but they can't tell me what to do. I'll probably uh, double or triple or whatever that is. So let's start with the Zhang Weili side. Win by TKO. I think this is a lot of her win condition. Um, I think it could come from the feet. 
Uh, I think it could come from the clinch, a couple of nice elbows in the clinch, but uh, mostly I think it's going to come from uh, ground and pound there. So uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, okay, I'm going to start with 50% uh, and go from there. I think it's at least 50%. Zhang Wei Li to win by submission. She doesn't attempt many, right? Um, I don't think she attempts many. She just she's looking for ground and pound. She's looking for control. We saw Yan Shenan go five rounds with Mackenzie Dern. Two of those rounds, Mackenzie Dern had her back, uh, had her mounted. She was good enough to defend those submissions. So um, I don't know if the Zhang Wei Li submission super live, but I think in the ground positions, uh, the crucifix. I'm going to assign at least ten percent there. And then win by decision, I think, is also live, but it's really dependent on how much of a beating uh, Kenyan really survived there. Uh, I don't think it goes to decision. I think the the output that Wei Li uh, throws is going to be a difference maker. If she's able to survive, some of those rounds can be 10-8s there. I don't think, um, you know, we'll leave that at 15%. I think 15% sounds about right, but uh, we'll see. Uh, moving over to the Yan Shenan side, uh, win by KO. I'm going to say that's most of her win equity, uh, and I think it's going to come early. I think she has the power early in rounds one and two, but again, she only has one knockdown in the UFC career, uh, and that was against Jessica Andras. Jessica Andras comes forward, left hook, left hook, left hook, and then Yan Shenan, I talked about, there's a nice step back counter, uh, through the right-hand counter. As soon as Andras went back, the referee jumped in, stopped the fight right away. Very quick stoppage in my mind. I thought Andraj could have fought out of it. So that was her only knockdown and her uh, her, her last KO win. I've seen Zhang Weili take some big shots. I've seen Zhang Weili take that same right hand from Lemos. Lemos has a lot more power than Yan, I think, uh, and survive it. So uh, I don't want to be disrespectful, but like 10%. It's like a puncher's chance. 10% maybe uh, for Yan to win by KO. Maybe, okay, we'll go 15% to be safe. Uh, no, I'm going to go 10%. We'll go 10% here. Win by submission. I don't think it happens. Um, we saw her get controlled by Claudia on the ground. Uh, Carla Sparza on the ground. Um, never once threw up a, a submission from her back. Um, wasn't too active off her back there. Uh, it's, it's less than 5%, probably more than 0%, but uh, given the way... I'll leave it at 0%. They're not dying to put any more on that side. And then uh, Yan Shenan decision. If you told me it was going to be a strictly stand-up fight uh, with no grappling, uh, no nothing for five rounds, and it goes five rounds, I could see Yan just, you know, she does have speed. I will give her speed. I give her maybe some volume. Um, I can't give it more than 10%, though. <coughs> um... Yeah, I don't. I don't really see her like. I see the 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 rounds that Wei Li wins are going to be big, big rounds. Um, a lot of ground and pound could be a lot of ten eight rounds, honestly. And then so for Yan to win a decision after like eating a ten eight round, I don't think it's too likely there. Uh, even ten percent seems a little bit high. Uh, I'm going to add to the Wei Li uh, KO there. So. Right now it's 80-20. I'm going to say it's a little bit more, but uh, let's recap this just to give you where my head's at, and I think it still might be a little bit not too much there. Zhang Weili to win by TKO, 55%, minus 122 or better. Zhang Weili to win by submission, 10%, plus 900 or better. That one seems a little bit high at plus 900, but uh, Zhang Weili to win by decision, 15%, plus 567 or better for a total money line of 80% or minus 400. Uh, win inside the distance here, I have at 65%, uh, minus 186 or better. Uh, and then on the Yan Shenan side, I have KO 10% or plus 900 or better, 0% uh, win by submission, and then win by decision 10% or plus 900 or better. Total money line of 20%, uh, plus 400 or better. Uh, win inside the distance, only 10% plus 900 or better. Uh, fight to go to decision, I think, is 25% or plus 300 or better. And not to go to decision, minus 375% or better. Uh, and then the inside the distance only uh, line is going to be nuts. I'll be searching for that uh, line as soon as it comes out. Um, I think that number sounds about right. I, I, I'm even willing to go up to 85%. I don't see many options here for Yan. Again, it's a really a puncher's chance, and she hasn't really shown that she has heavy power in the punches. 
Uh, we've seen Yang Wei Li uh, eat a lot of punches or like eat some big punches there and just walk through it. <coughs> I think Yang Wei Li just dominates this fight. And, uh, you know, I think the fight opened at minus 300, minus 298. I got six units down at minus 298 there to win two units. Um, now the fight, uh, the odds are a little bit more inflated here. Let me just double check what they are right now because I haven't looked. I wanted to tape it uh, again uh, just before I got any more action done. So let's go over to fightodds.io. Uh, UFC 300, Wei Li, minus 360. At DraftKings, still minus 345. And that line is coming back up. It's, yeah, it's, it opened 300. It's bouncing around here from uh, 325 to 345. Um, I predict it probably goes down to minus 450 by fight time. We're still a couple weeks out. People are not really looking forward to this line, but I think once that uh, that fight week gets there, I think Zhang Weili is going to be a heavy parlay piece. You're going to see that line drop to minus 450. So if you like it now, I think go lock it in there. I can't see much money coming on the Yan side. Um, and if you are betting Yan, please tell me what you see and why you're betting Yan because uh, I don't see it there. So um, those are my bets. Those are my breakdowns. I'll post everything over to patreon.com slash fighting stats. Uh, I'll get all these breakdowns out uh, to you and then lead up to that. Again, we're going to this event here, so uh, I'm going to be a little bit more aggressive on some of my plays uh, and some of my bets. Just uh, hoping to, to hit a big score in Vegas and uh, see what happens. So my name is RT. This is Fighting Stats. I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, let me know what you thought in the comments below. Bye. All right, guys. Well, that is it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this type of content, make sure you smash the like button. Hit the subscribe. Uh, you'll get notified anytime we put out new content. Listen to this. We just hit a massive parlay for $29,000 at UFC 297. That is one UFC after 296 where we hit a parlay for $82,000. That's back-to-back -back parlays. We've made $110,000. And how do we do it? We use our exclusive fighting stats. Not available anywhere else. Our exclusive fighting stats gives us information, gives us a big edge over the sports books, and tell us what's going to happen within the fights. We post all that information, our breakdowns, our best bets, over at patreon.com slash fighting stats. Don't miss out. Make sure you subscribe today. Again, my name is Art C. This is Fighting Stats. Thanks for watching.